privacy versus progress and whether or not they can coexist in what we are calling the information age. And just in case you're in desperate need of an extra hashtag, feel free to use that. You don't need to tell me. Anyway, I came of age, I grew up in the cable TV era, when suddenly we had these channels uh, and these networks for uh, all your interests, science fiction, news, sports, movies, like you name it, you could get it. And then we got like VCRs and we could watch movies when we wanted to and we could record things and watch things when we wanted to. And really, the only people who knew your viewing habits really were the cable company because they knew what channels you got and the guy at the video store. And if you didn't want to know, you would just come back later. Um, our credit card companies knew uh, you know, a, a lot about our spending habits what we bought, where we bought, how much we bought. But if you didn't want them to know, you would just you know, use something called cash. And no one knew but you and the person in the store. Paying tolls was really a pain in the butt because you're always scrounging for change. You're throwing it, you're missing the basket. All these things happen. You probably don't even know what I'm talking about. You can understand that. But easy pass was this fantastic thing, this little sensor. When that happened, it was just this huge time saver. And it made me think, oh my god, we're entering this era where we're going to be able to pay for things with retina scans and thumbprints, and my whole sci-fi dream of the world is going to come true, and it's really terrific and fantastic. Except I also read a lot of Philip K. Dick and 1984, their Orwell books, and they're, they, they were worlds where privacy no longer existed, and uh, even your thoughts could be your doing. Um, but the tech was really, really cool. <laughs> I mean, there was nobody who saw Minority Report who did not come out of the theater saying, oh my god, I want that swipey computer thing <laughs> that Tom Cruise was using, every single person. And then we got it, actually, sort of. Not exactly the same thing, but we're getting there. You know, Apple was probably worked on it. Uh, and we're swiping and we're downloading apps and we're, we're just getting all, of, all these things that really cater to all of our interests. But can you imagine, do you realize how much information Apple has on all of us? Then we joined all these platforms, like Friendster, and MySpace, and Facebook, and Twitter, and Foursquare, anywhere where we could communicate with other people without paying for it, like we used to have to do with your phones, this thing that we used to have in our houses. And we became the product. And all this data was what made us a valuable product. And now we're using all these variables, these Fitbits, these fuel bands, these Misfit Shines, and it's overlaying on all of this other data that's already out there. So now there's really, really personal data about us. And you know, we want to connect this data. We want to connect it and collect it. We, you know, this is something that we really want to do. We want to know, we want to track our fitness. We want to remember where we were and who we were with. The problem is, it's, it's all out there. And Symantec, I, I found a study where they, they took a $70 Raspberry Pi and we were able to grab all of this data that the wearables were broadcasting just out in public and people didn't even know. Nobody wants the glass hole next to them in the bathroom, of course, but there's all these other wearable cameras now that are actually a lot more, um, a lot less easy to notice. And lest you think that I think that all of this tech is horrible and we're heading for a disaster, there's a wonderful thing, this bra, it is 90% um, accuracy on early stage breast cancer. And I think, oh my god, this is like the hopeful Star Trek cancer thing. Except I also think about Gattaca and our genetics. And what, what about this information from this bra? Can it be hacked? Can it be used against us? Can it be used to determine what our life is going to be and what we're going to do with our lives? No matter what security is put in place, information will always be available to the highest bidder. It always has been, it will always will be. The difference is there's a lot more information out there and a lot more money out there now. The, the gap between the haves and the have-nots is like going to continue to widen. To the point where people with means are literally going to be able to buy more time through what they're able to do. The real question is whether this progress whether this, this world that we want, that we're looking for, is, is possible while also still having some measure of privacy. I don't know, there are greater minds than mine working on that problem, I hope. Uh, but I really want to know what you all think. And is, are we headed for this hopeful 
optimistic future, or are we just doomed to a dystopian, Orwellian future? 